So over the last, I don't know, two months or so, I've been to um, uh, three now uh, estate sales of um, machinists and tool makers that have uh, passed over to the big shop in the sky. Um, this first lot here is some of the stuff that I got at the first one I went to, and it was the estate of um, a gentleman named uh, Tom Pedersen. And, um, you know, the this guy actually lived about, I don't know, five miles from where I am right now. And, um, um, you know, we could have crossed tracks very, very easily. He had a shop in his backyard um, shed, actually pretty extensive. Um, and uh, he was a uh, mechanician with uh, UC Berkeley uh, physics shop. And uh, anyway, I got a bunch of stuff to show you from that. Uh, some of it was given to me by the executor, and uh, you know, and I bought a bunch of stuff too. Um, he endowed a uh, um, kind of a fund to support uh, grad students in the physics department. So all the proceeds from um, the sale of his, what was left of his estate uh, go to fund this uh, this endowment to uh, pay for some of their research. Uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, anyway, the executor contacted me and invited me, and uh, I got to uh, to kind of look through this guy's life, literally, and uh, it was pretty interesting. Anyway, these are a few few items here that uh, that I got that uh, are worth uh, um, highlighting and talking about. So um, let's uh, let's talk about them because uh, there's some pretty cool stuff, and this guy with. Tom was um, was a pretty interesting cat, so uh, let's check it out. So this first one, this is a, you know, it's just an angle plate that uh, he probably made, is my guess. Uh, it's heat treated and ground, and <clears throat> it looks like he lapped it a bit. Um, there was a lot of lapping uh, gear in uh, in his estate. Um, so anyway, I I got this mainly because it was a it was kind of a um, long compared to its height and width and um, um, you know and also uh, it was marked with his name too I, it's it's always nice for me to get something that has the person's name in it too that gives me a nice connection with them and he did a he had marked uh, marked his name on the top of it that's me measuring this thing just to see how good it was um, and by my measuring it's about three tenths uh, uh, in that direction so uh, uh, but it's a nice little angle plate. Uh, not sure what kind of tool steel. It's got the uh, the usual uh, uh, marks that uh, that come with uh, actually doing the work, right? And it's not uh, not uncommon to see. So kind of cool. This next one here is uh, this caught my attention just because it's it's kind of uh, styled differently than uh, than you would normally see. And what it is is it's a uh, it's a milling machine vice stop, so this clamps over the uh, um, the edge of uh, the jaw in the like a curt vice, right? And uh, allows you to position stock on it. But what caught my attention was it's kind of built a little differently. Um, it's one piece, and it has these nice little kind of wing extensions on it that uh, that are relieved. He's got one that's got a narrow contact and one that's got a, a slightly wider contact. And from the looks of it, it, uh, it looks like he used it a, a fair amount. So two little set screws. Uh, and I think it's just, uh, it's just coal rolled. And you know, I wrote his name in it. it. He didn't have his name in it, but I put it in there um, just with an engraver. So I didn't forget uh, uh, where it came from. But th that's a nice little project if you, wanna, if you wanna do one, right? You know, the vice jaw size there and then um, um, leave some uh, some meat hanging off to the side so uh, uh, for you know the contact points so uh, if you wanted to make one there's there you go right so that's a cool one and uh, we got plenty more where that came from all right this this it took me a while to figure out what this is and this was in his shop and like I said before that there was a lot of honing and uh, and abrasive materials, you know, stones and uh, and sticks and things like that, and lapping compounds. And he was using this to do some kind of polishing or lapping. And uh, so, anyway, I kind of grabbed it. It's got a little bit of weight to it. And I, I kind of flattened one side of it off here. 
because it had you know it had a sway back in it from use from a fair amount of use and I've been playing around with it to see how it kind of behaves so what this is or what I think it is is a piece of slate like uh, you'd see in the old-timey chalkboard right and um, so it's got kind of that kind of density you know like almost like stone right and um, you know, dense stone more so than, you know, like a, an abrasive stick like this that's, that's a little bit porous. And we're gonna show something with that in a minute. Um, so and I've been doing a little bit of research to see if people use slate as an abrasive or a hone or a lap or anything like that. And I'm, I'm kind of coming up, I'm kind of striking out. I haven't seen anything. So if anybody out there knows or um, has uh, links to anything that uh, kind of connects, um, using slate uh, as an abrasive or a polishing um, uh, kind of a polishing stone or anything like that anyway I'm gonna keep playing with it it looks like you got bandsawed at some point and um, um, you know so it's not super hard uh, so it kind of breaks down pretty fast so maybe that's one of its uh, one of its qualities that he uh, was after there so anyway a chunk of slate uh, I'm pretty sure it's slate uh, tastes like slate looks like slate I think it's slate um, so let me know if you know anything. Well, while we're on the subject of abrasives, this is some. Um, I saw this and I was like, "What? It's some kind of old school monkey snot uh, uh, weird uh, technology here." So it's some kind of dry grinding lubricant. So it's a stick lube. I'd never heard of this before. So some of you old timers out there may have uh, may recognize this, but. Uh, um, now look at that. It's even, I didn't notice it has a uh, it has its own labeling there. But I think you you know you hold that up against the wheel and uh, and kind of load the wheel with it, and it behaves kind of like uh, wax does when you're on a sanding disc, right? So it the chips come out, but it doesn't. Uh, they don't get stuck in the grains of the abrasive. So uh, I haven't tried it yet, but. Uh, like I said, maybe some of you uh, old school guys out there recognize this. And uh, um, oh yeah, there you go. To test, a uh, wheel several grades harder than uh, normally used. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll give it a try here at some point and uh, and see how it behaves and if it uh, uh, helps my grinding any. <laughs> so anyway, Magic uh, Royal Jade uh, dry grinding lube. Some of these things, you know, yeah, you probably. It probably works super good, and you can't find it anymore. And you know, one of these on uh, on eBay is you know a hundred dollars or something like that. That's probably what it is. <laughs> All right, this thing's pretty cool. I couldn't pass this one up. What this is, and and we have a we have something like this at work, and it fits in the milling machine spindle, kind of like that. And you look through this, and then it's got a reticle on the inside uh, that you can use to. Uh, aligned to features. So it's got quite a bit of magnification. Now this is about the smallest one I've ever seen. Uh, usually the, the, they're a little bit larger and the main reason is so you can get your big fat head in here to, to look through that little <laughs> that little eyepiece. This one's pretty darn small. Um, but what's cool about this one is um, it's kind of adjustable so that you can actually get it um, um, you know pretty much dead nuts on center. And I was playing around with it with some scribe lines. Um, and it's it's pretty damn good. So it's got a reticle in it. And this little ring here actually, in fact, I'll go ahead and move it and um, you guys can maybe see. And you can probably see that tip kind of tilting. And that's how you, you adjust this. And what you do is you look at it in one direction, then you rotate it. Uh, 90 degrees and back and forth and you compare it and then you make little adjustments until it basically nulls uh, when you go all the way around, right? Um, so these guys are still around. Uh, let's see, is that right? I think I looked them up and I think, you, I think they're still around or at least I found instructions pretty easily. So let me, I'll just leave it at that. I don't remember if they're still around or not. So it grips in the spindle and like I said, it, you, you look through here. Now it's, it's a little too small to try to get the camera up in there and try to get a shot through that. But these are neat when you have to measure something that you can't touch. 
uh, you know, something like an O-ring or something that's squishy that you can't really grab it, right? Um, or features on um, something that's really thin, like uh, shim stock or uh, small, very, very small holes, things like that. Sometimes uh, these are uh, optical methods are pretty handy for those kinds of measurements. So um, anyway, center scope uh, made in <clears throat> Glendale, California. And uh, this is a serial number 1084. So I don't know if it was made in 84. Um, or I don't know what. So anyway, a little center scope, pretty cool. Couldn't pass that up. Okay, this is, uh, this is kind of a research project here. So I know there's some guys out there that, that are pretty good about sussing out and mining the internet for information. Um, this was part of this uh, Tom uh, Pedersen estate. And these are some, some steel blocks that he got from probably from uh, um, somebody that he worked with at some point and you know kind of or maybe he went to an estate sale and bought some stuff uh, from um, uh, Rude Herleman's uh, estate. And I think it's a Swiss name I'm not a hundred percent positive so this I did a little bit of poking around and the best I could find was um, uh, somebody you know I, I tried uh, Herleman a tool maker tool and die maker machinist you know those kinds of combinations and um, I found something in uh, Byron, Illinois, and uh, might have been a mason, and uh, with a wife named Mary. Maybe, maybe. Don't don't take that as a hundred percent. So, like I said, I was poking around a little bit, but this guy was a was a tool maker or a machinist or a die maker. Now these these are kind of oddball blocks here. I would say um, they don't look like. Um, you know your classic one two three blocks what they look like is they were apart for something and they happened to be made out of tool steel and old Rudd uh, put the grinder on them and said hey I got me a couple of nice blocks now right and uh, uh, being thrifty Swiss guy right or whatever anyway so um, if anybody uh, can uh, suss out uh, or find any info on this guy um, that would be pretty cool to kind of connect the story back together. So um, let me know if he, anybody finds anything, you know, obituary, something like that. And like I said, don't take this as 100%. Um, so these were found in California um, in Tom Pedersen's estate. So this guy might have moved to California and connected with him. Or like I said, maybe he got him at a garage sale or a you know flea market like me you know always kind of buying stuff like this and uh, and uh, once again it's kind of to me it's always cool to have tools that are marked like this that give you a personal connection to the uh, to the person so I feel like uh, um, you know Rud, Rud's looking down going cool somebody's got my blocks right on you know and he goes if you only knew what those were they were uh, you know valve bodies for a poop pump or something you know <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> I'm making jokes here now, so, uh, um, you know, anyway, I hope he's having a good laugh up there uh, watching us uh, play with these blocks, so. This next one is, uh, is an example of uh, um, something that uh, this guy Tom Pedersen made, and um, so it was some kind of external hone, and that immediately caught my attention, and it's got a, oh, I don't know, that looks like a, it's an, I didn't measure it, it's an 80 or 100 pitch screw there. And a very nice little knob here with some uh, uh, helical knurling on it and the, the surface is curved here. So that's, uh, now I don't know if he made that knob, I, I'm gonna say he made that knob because the rest of it looks, uh, looks shop made. And let's, let's open it up a little bit. Probably take me half an hour to wind this thing open here a little bit. And, um, so what we have is we have a series of uh, uh, like a lower mandrel and then we have a series of, of uh, abrasive stones. And this is in a little dovetail. It's not loose right now or I'd take it out. And you can change it and uh, there's different radii here. I haven't tried it yet to see how it works on a, you know, a cylindrical uh, surface like this, but it might be kind of interesting so to play with. So that's kind of why I got it. And, uh, uh, to mess around with it, so you know, this is the kind of stuff that I like to I like to find something that I can uh, experiment with and uh, and play around with and see how it works, right? 
And then, um, now these, boy, those look, uh, those look like factory something there, just the way they're marked and stuff. Um, there's a little bit there, so let me, uh, let me put this back together. Anyway, external hone, uh, and then we'll try that out on some, um, uh, something hard and, uh, and round and, uh, kind of see how it behaves. All right, this next thing here. So, some of, uh, some of you guys may have seen these uh, guys that play around with uh, sharpening planes and uh, water st using water stones and stuff like that. What this is is this is a, a conditioning block for uh, uh, it's a flattening stone, okay? And um, so it's really for kind of softer uh, uh, water stones. But um, anyway, I kind of got it on a whim and I've been playing around with it. And I'll tell you what, this thing rocks, man. I had some, and I, I kind of saved one that was kind of chowdered up like this. You see this, this is just an India stone that's in not in very good shape here. Um, but I saved this one uh, to kind of to demo this thing, right? So it's, uh, what is this made? Is this silicon carbide? Yeah, this is a silicon carbide. And um, um, it is pretty aggressive with these grooves in it. And, um, and you can see just that little rub there uh, where we, we, sh we showed the high points there. So let's, uh, let's give it a go, right? Let's see if I can illustrate how, well, you guys can see this has got a pretty bad groove in it and that's cupped. It's, it's pretty bad. So let's, let's give it a, You'll get a sense, and you can see it's just it's tearing it up here, right? I mean, not in a bad way, right? But it's it's going to town. Look at that, and look what. I mean, uh, like I said, it's it's pretty aggressive, and uh, and look at that. That's <laughs> that's pretty good. So let's let's do an edge here. So if you got Grandpa's old sharpening stone and it looks like a swayback mule or whatever, you can actually bring it back. And then um, the other neat part is, uh, according to this, and I actually did it. Um, you can take this on some silicon carbide paper on the surface plate and you can recondition this too to flatten this out because this is wearing away too pretty quickly um, when you're cutting abrasive like that. But that's it impressed the heck out of me and like I said I, uh, I had a couple of stones that, that weren't looking that great and uh, I just started going through my drawer and uh, finding the the funkiest looking ones and, uh, and tuning them up so I was kind of having a good time. Uh, you know, it, it's always fun to do something where you're getting a good, fast result, right? And, it, and it's in a good direction. <laughs> so let's, right? I mean, that will probably take a little while to get out of there, but uh, I think you guys get the idea. Um, this is a Norton flattening, flattening stone, and uh, if you find one of these, uh, it's pretty good for fixing these up. So you guys know that uh, I'm an apron guy. So, I don't know, I picked up this habit a long time ago, having all my stuff kind of, or, or the things that I use regularly, you know, close by. Um, and I'm always interested um, to see the kinds of things that other people carry in their aprons or carry on their persons when they're kind of going about doing their craft, right? Um, those tools that they really want close to them and uh, uh, they want really handy. Um, so as part of this uh, Tom Pedersen estate, um, some of the stuff that was, that was kind of left over that was just going to go in the trash, literally, uh, one of the things was his shop apron. So uh, I you know, said, hey, what's going to happen to that? And he says, you want it? Just take it. It's going to go in the junk, right? And I said, yeah, of course I'll take it. And um, so anyway, I want to show you this apron and, uh, and <laughs> you know, like I said before, uh, you know, this guy lived a few miles from me and we could have been, we could have been good buddies, I'm pretty sure. 
he's an apron guy let me just say that okay so let's check out his apron and uh, and let's get a personal connection with uh, with Mr. Tom Pedersen okay so it's pretty cool so here's the uh, here's the apron and let's just let's just look at this it's it's canvas um, it's real heavy duty actually actually and this is some of his his shop gear that was still that was still in it when I got it okay um, so let's just check this out it, and it's kind of neat now you can see let's, hopefully you can see that let me uh, get this uh, down a little further here so you guys can see that but the first thing that really stands out is this guy had his micrometer with him all the time okay I mean just all the time and uh, it's it's imprinted and you know let's see did I wash this one I, I got two of them actually I washed this the other one but it's got the same imprint so I think he had two and he kind of went back and forth funny he you know uses the exact same straps that I like uh, uh, these guys here uh, he was a real tall guy from what I from what I heard but anyway um, uh, let's let's go through this it's kind of neat so here's his favorite pencil and the first thing that I look at is I go wow look at the look at the wear on this thing okay um, this was something that this guy used a lot it went in and out of this pocket he had it for years and um, um, <laughs> used the hell out of this thing okay it's an eagle turquoise uh, Prestomatic, so this is a solid lead, and he probably, you know, hand sharpened the or filed the the lead to keep it sharp. Um, I use something similar, but uh, it's just a 0.9 millimeter. Um, so anyway, that's just cool. I mean, it's got, you know, some of his uh, <laughs> some of his DNA on that. Here's a scale. So tenths and. Um, 50th, okay, and then 30 seconds and 64th on the other side. Flexible rule. Oop, hey, look, somebody else has got one similar. <laughs> so, like I said, these guys, you know, we're uh, we're kind of uh, along the same lines. Now he was a smoker, so uh, we got the uh, de facto lighter here, and uh, I guess he's a red sharpie guy, um, judging by this. So uh, that's seen some uh, <laughs> some decent use. And that, that's all that's in this pocket here. Now this this one's kind of interesting. Here's what's in this one. Now I've never seen anybody do this before, but apparently he did. And what's in here? Let's pull this out. So these are some of his go-to things here. So a couple of honing stones, coarse and fine. So he was touching up tool bits, uh, you know, regularly. Okay. And um, so there's that. Um, that's a little piece of carbide, so I'm not quite clear what he was doing with that, or maybe it was just part of a job he was working on. But check out these Allen wrenches. So these are appear to be the common socket head screw sizes, uh, and uh, but what struck me is the wear on them. Okay, these are all polished and rounded and smooth from years and years and years of use. And um, and it's kind of an interesting carry item, right? In in the apron that he just had this handful of Allen wrenches, and you know he was probably really selective, you know, about the sizes that he kept in there, right? It was stuff that he was doing all the time, and and my guess is he designed around these particular size screws, right? Uh, when he was doing his work, so you know this this is the kind of stuff that makes you really efficient, right? There's a little chip from one of his jobs, right? Look at that. What that is. Anyway, uh, what struck me when I looked at these, I go, my God, look at the wear on those, right? And, you know, I've had mine for, for quite a few years, right? You know, and they show some of the, the, the signs of silvering and whatnot that, uh, that, you know, you get from, well, and there's certain sizes you just don't use very often, right? Um, you know from a fair amount of wear but this is this is kind of off the hook here uh, now part of that may be that they were in the same pocket with some stones uh, that might be part of it but uh, uh, fairly impressive so anyway this is this is pretty special for me and uh, like I said it gives me a personal connection with with Tom and uh, I'm gonna save that chip too 
And you know what, Tom, you have a uh, you have a peg in my shop uh, that your apron's going to hang. And um, if you want to use the shop at night, come on over, right? So uh, anyway, this is Tom's Tom's apron. Pretty uh, pretty cool. All right, this is the last thing I'm going to show you from the Tom Pedersen estate. Um, he was into cars, and he was he had a, an old Dodge truck that he was working on, and in, uh, in his shop that he put a modern uh, V8 engine in, and redid the wiring, and was redoing the whole thing. Beautiful, beautiful job. Um, I might hit. Eh, I got some pictures of that, but uh, anyway, um, this is something that uh, that caught my attention in the shop, and it's something that he made to do, you know, his work on car stuff, right? So it's a little. It's a load balancer for lifting engines and things like that. But it's just kind of cool, and I, I kind of <laughs> thought it was clever, and I decided to grab it. So let's uh, let's check it out. We'll go ahead and lift this thing, you know, just for fun. And you guys will get a sense of this thing, and uh, we'll show it from the side here. And for those that are curious, yes, I'm rescraping this little surface plate here, and this allows me to just kind of flip this over. Um, and then uh, swing this around and uh, come around to the surface plate over here and uh, and spot this. Okay, it's got um, actually it's got red lead on it right now. But uh, anyway, that's another 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 video, another subject. But here, check this out. It's got a uh, uh, acne thread on it with a little right angle gearbox. Whee. And we can we can change the position of the screw. See, I hope my arm's not in the way here with the screw. And then, you know, literally perfectly balance this, uh, this load here. Get it perfectly. You know, a guy with a, guy with a level could uh, put a level on this and uh, really get it just the way they want. Anyway, it, just something fun, and uh, I thought it was kind of cool. And, uh, and uh, now it's uh, now it's here and I'll use it and it's good for stuff like this so anyway engine engine load balancer